Okay. So anyway, we'll go for we'll go for a wander shortly. See what's happening. And we'll just make a start from here. Just going to grab a few things before we go, including a torch and a bag. And then we will go and see what what we can find. The other thing I've been doing whilst waiting here to start broadcast, let me turn the camera around, is looking for bats or listening for bats using this bat detector attached to my iPad. And what that's doing is just listening to the ultrasound and recording it and having a go at seeing if it can automatically identify the bats for me. Whether it's not found any whilst I've been looking, it is recording, so I can always check later. But we'll we'll stop that because I don't really want to leave my iPad lying whilst I go for a walk. And I'll review the recordings a bit later on and see what we've got. It's taking a time to stop, as it certainly does, but there we go. So I can put that away, and then in a moment we'll go for a walk into the woods. As I walk into the woods, I'm going to go off the Wi-Fi signal that I'm on here at the moment, and drop onto the cellular date, so the broadcast will probably break up a little bit for a couple of moments as we go but we'll then recover so bear with me if it gets a little choppy for a moment and we'll go for a walk in the woods and we'll talk about the different ways we're serving the moths and perhaps particularly some of the ways that we do this in autumn this is the, one of the main Whereas you can't find things, it's just to walk around with a torch like this after dark. And ideally with a butterfly net, although if I was carrying that I wouldn't be able to carry this phone. It looks like we're dropping the signal now. So one of the ways of, of looking for moths, another night flying insects of course is just wandering around with a torch seeing what's there and ideally catching them in a net if you need to have a proper look i haven't got a net because i've got one hand full of phone and haps and one hand full of torch and i don't have three hands the other method we use of course are these moth traps this is a moth trap i've shown these on the broadcast several times so we'll not spend long on this today but these lights attract Moths and other insects. I can see a beetle and a crane there. There's a crane fly on the outside. Several crane flies actually. They tend to be very common at this time of year. Oops, there we go. And the traps will attract all these things. I sometimes have a go at identifying things other than moths, but inevitably can be difficult. And we'll continue on here going further into the woods to see what we can find. Obviously, mainly you're seeing what's in the torch beam. You might be able to hear a few dark bush crickets chirping. Whether I'll be able to find one to see. Let me see if I can see. They always sound really loud and like they'd be easy to find. And they almost never are. Oh well. Let's continue going, see what else is there. The 
wood pigeons being disturbed there. They're flushed out of the trees because they can hear me. See you. The tree coming up. Talk. Okay. So we've got spread on this trunk of the tree here, you might be able to see this dark patch on the torchlight there. This is something called entomological sugar, which is essentially a mixture of sugar and beer, treacle, and it forms a sticky sweet substance which can be attractive to insects but is not behaving itself tonight and I spread this on various trees throughout the site and can go through and see if anything has been attracted to them. Of course this being actual live broadcasting of the real natural world it's not necessarily behaving itself and there's nothing particularly has been attracted yet. But this is a method that can be quite effective at this time of year on a warm evening. The nectar sources that occur in nature are perhaps starting to dry up a bit, the flowers are finished, so as a source of a sweet liquid that insects can feed on, the artificially provided stuff is really useful. Let's go this way. So we'll go a bit further on into the woods, again, so we'll see the torchlight dancing. I am seeing a few things darting through the beam of the torch, which is helpful, it does suggest there are insects about. I haven't seen anything I could reliably identify yet though. It's not particularly dark in here really, I could probably see my way around without a torch but I'd not be able to see if there were any anything flying, not be able to find things, so I do use the torch. But we're here in suburban London basically and the, the light pollution is pretty severe, so there is a lot of light even at night time just scattered off the clouds and off the atmosphere from all the street lamps. Anyway, we'll continue having a look to see if we can find anything. I hope I find something to show you guys because it was a challenge otherwise, but that's, I guess, the nature of live broadcasting and particularly live broadcasting of the natural world somebody forgets to tell the insects when they're scheduled to be here to appear on HAPS it's uh, really rather unhelpful of them so we've got some more sugar here on the tree more of this sticky boiled up sugar solution I've made which at least theoretically should be attracting insects but is manifestly failing to perform on screen. Uh, there's a millipede of some kind crawling through the torch beam there. Just incidentally on the tree I would say, I don't think that's got anything to do with the sugar I put on. It didn't seem to be having anything to do with it anyway. But making these artificial food sources at night time, particularly in autumn, is 
one of the survey methods that we do make use of here in Perryville. And it's one of the things that, particularly when I took over looking after and studying the moths of this site in the mid 2000s, I made a conscious effort to start doing it. It had been done much less in the past on here. A lot of the surveying had been done by way of light traps, which I still do and probably is still the main way I survey because light traps can be very effective. But these other methods can attract different species, so it's always worth trying. And then we're coming up to one of the other interesting survey approaches that we take. in autumn particularly, which is to look at ivy, where ivy's in blossom. This is not brilliantly in blossom yet. And see if there's anything visiting the various flowers of the ivy. And this can be quite an effective nectar source. It's a good late nectar source. Where it's out in blossom. And the blossoms are just really starting here. If we have a look at these ones, you can see that they're, they're not they're not fully out yet, not fully producing their their blossom. Let's have a quick climb up here and see if there's anything further up on the plant. I'm not seeing anything just yet. Uh, you can see, obviously. The flowers are starting to develop and hopefully will, well, in a week or so I suspect these will be producing a lot of nectar and a lot of scent and hopefully attracting some insects but none just yet. We'll try a bit further into the wood, there's some other patches of ivy that are worth having a look at. See if any of them are producing and attracting insects. We you see here one of another of the light traps, another of the moth light traps that I'm using. Uh, we're not going to examine this one live uh, for two reasons. One is the box is rather awkward to open. The other is that the it's made with fairly cheap UV lights and whilst the specification says they're safe to stare at with with the eye do I really trust them there is a moth here though let me try and get on here mm. a bit awkward so this is a snout moth Not particularly easy to get the camera onto it at this angle. Uh, snout moth. What I will do is I will go through these traps at, in the morning, pull a few interesting moths out of it, take photographs of them and do another broadcast tomorrow some point probably in the evening and talk about some of the species that we found in this survey so where we do get to see things that will hopefully provide another opportunity to see what we've caught but I'll do that
tomorrow. So we're going to wander through now into the another part of the wood the end and check the check a couple more of the patches of ivy and see if any of them have got enough blossom on to produce interesting produce interesting insects. Rather hard to judge whether they will or not. It's got a little bit cooler than I hoped it would this evening, which is not ideal for mothing or looking at moths. It's always better to have a warm evening. It's not too bad. I've certainly not had to put a coat on or anything. Probably maybe 12 degrees, something like that. So we'll go a bit further on into the reserve now. This is our central clearing. So you're not particularly seeing much of the reserve with these nighttime broadcasts. I have done several during the day from here, so do go back through the feed if you want to see what the place looks like with you know daylight and everything going on. We're coming up now to another another of our moth traps. These are the moth traps that I run here. Glowing away ahead, it'll start to show up on the... So we get a bit closer. You'll probably see it glowing up ahead there. We'll have a quick look and see if there's anything at that trap on the outside that's worth a glance and we'll go and have a, get, have a look at some of the ivy blossom elsewhere in the site to see if that's showing anything. So I'm probably slightly, you know, a week or so ahead of when the ivy will be absolutely optimal for attracting insects, but perhaps wanted to do a theme this week about autumn. This is one of the autumn survey methods, so I thought I'd have a go this week, see if we can be lucky, see if we we get anything. Uh, see what we got here. And we have, there's another insect there, another snout moth, just flew into the trap. So, so this would be another. This would be another of the moth traps that I use here. And again, the idea is the bright light attracts the insects. They go into the trap, and then I can get up at dawn and go through here and find what what there is to see. And I will do another broadcast tomorrow where we talk about some of the things that we've seen in the trap. I'll not try and go through this now live. I'll, I'll have a go in the morning and I'll do another broadcast and we'll talk about what we can see then. But what we'll do now is we'll go up and check some more of the flowering ivy and we will see if in there I can find any more insects, any insects at all really taking nectar from the ivy as a sort of great late autumn nectar source, really important source of fuel for insects as we come into autumn and then of course the berries on the ivy 
become a really important source of food for birds over the winter months. So it's a really important plant. Rather an attractive slug there. Not going to attempt to identify slugs. They're not a group I'm particularly knowledgeable on. But it's rather a grey, grey orange one with a bright orange border. So if you like your slugs, and who doesn't like a good slug? Quite a few of them around at the moment. It's been very damp today. The air has been very humid. And so I think the conditions are really good for slugs to just wander about, slime their way around. So we're coming up to another patch of ivy now. Again, the flowers on this were a little bit behind when I checked earlier today, so I'm not massively optimistic we'll find much, but we'll give it a go. So here's the first patch of ivy. Let's see if I can change the focus of this beam on the torch a bit. Make it a bit wider. No. Okay, we'll have to manage. So yeah, a lot of this ivy isn't yet out in flower. Well, you can see a few here where there's certainly a bit of flowering ha happening. Um, there's a woodlouse on that one in the beam now. Again, possibly you can hear a few wood crickets chirping if I stop talking for a moment. And maybe you can hear, although it's quite distant, a contact call of a tawny owl. Calling over on Horsingham Hill, the neighbouring site. Uh, there's a spider of some description. Again, I'm not particularly good with spiders. I'm not going to attempt to identify it beyond it's a spider of some kind. Crawling its way through the undergrowth. Very long legged spider there. I suspect it would be distinctive enough to be able to get to family or possibly even genus level if, if you are in any way good at spiders. At the moment, much of this blossom is probably a week or so off being fully in flower. I'm just scanning as I go and we'll stop if I find anything to show you. Hopefully you can hear those crickets now, bush crickets, or katydids as they call them in America. Fairly distinctive call the dark bush cricket has. Not all, the, in fact the majority of orthopterans I can't identify. Well, here's our first moth of the evening, just to prove that I'm not completely wasting my time. So this is a chestnut moth. And it's feeding there, or it's, well, not actually obviously feeding at the moment, but it's obviously, it will be visiting this ivy in the hope of collecting some nectar. And will therefore, I say, is 
the, the ivy blossom is one of the ways we serve it for moths in this time of year, the autumn, particularly when it's a really good source of nectar, when there isn't much else by way of nectar for insects to feed on. There's a snail there, it may well be eating away at the leaves of the ivy, not having anything particularly to do with the nectar or the blossom. Okay, I'm not going to attempt to identify snails. They're not a group I'm particularly knowledgeable on. I know there's another patch of ivy coming up here. Just need to see if I can find any insects on it. Not any moths or anything else to show you. Yeah, it's not really fully in blossom. It's uh, probably a, a week or two off still. Off the path here. So there's another little group of insects I'll show you here. And it will be quite quick with these ones because even at night time they're not always fun. But in the path here, or in these steps down. There is actually a wasp's nest. The nest there, the common wasp, Vespula vulgaris. They are starting to notice me, and if you stick your nose in too much, they do get a little stingy, so we'll not stop with them. And they are actually right in the middle of the steps. And we've had to put some warning signs up because a few people have put their feet down onto the nest, and the wasps object to you doing that. So, there we go, brief discussion of some of the ways that we look for insects of an evening, in autumn in particular, because that's the season, and that's the, the theme that we're doing here on HAPS at the moment is autumn. What we'll do is we'll aim to end by looking here this chestnut moth and we'll end on that because it's the only moth I've found so far and with any luck we will find some more in the traps and other surveys and I'll do another broadcast tomorrow and see what we get. I think we want to put the end of broadcast now. Perhaps seems to be having an interesting mo moment at the moment. Right, let me try again. Right, we will end this broadcast in a moment as soon as the end button starts functioning again. Why has it done that? This is getting really frustrating suddenly. Come on, Haps, just do what you're told. End the broadcast when I press the end broadcast button. Whilst looking at 